Hi, welcome to Plaid and Lattes. I'm Holly. I'm AJ. And today we're going to talk about our fall favorites. From horror movies to cookbooks and other things between. If that's something you want to see, then do not adjust your screen. So we'll you start, start, AJ. Alright, so I'll start off with some more fall, less terrifying movies. <laughs> Something Wicked This Way Comes. It should be on Disney Plus. I'm not sure if it is. Either way, it's a Ray Bradbury film. It's good. It's creepy. There's not blood and guts. So you can show it for younger kids and it won't be a problem. But, but it's, it's, a good one. <laughs> it's really fall feeling. It doesn't take place on Halloween. So it's good for any time during the fall. However, with Halloween, another Ray, Bra Ray Bradbury great that no one ever talks about, Halloween Tree. It's a great movie. It's animated. It's got a little bit of history in it. It's funny and cute. And it's just a really great watch. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Anyone who grew up in the 90s should know who she is. She is amazing and still to this day incredibly stunning. It's a great movie. Little creepy. <laughs> Not <laughs> silly. <laughs> and it's funny. It's got. It's hilarious. Exactly. It's. A great, fun movie to watch during yeah. the fall season. <laughs> Monster Squad. No more, more Monster Squad. <laughs> Wolfman's got no arms. <laughs> it's an excellent <laughs> 80s movie. Very 80s. <laughs> Very funny. Not scary at all. No. <laughs> it's good. The Changeling, on the other hand. Very fall. I think it takes place in November, though and it's very creepy it's not a blood guts and gore it's a where the hell is that coming from i personally don't watch it alone and i love horror movies but every noise afterwards will freak you out <laughs> but it's a good one <laughs> another non-horror movie that's good from fall into winter because it does take place during christmas a little bit ordinary people it is one of very few movies i actually rewatch and cry at there is a book that goes with it. <laughs> there is a book that goes with it. But the movie does such an amazing job. It's hard to write the silences that are in it. It is not a fast movie, but it is a very powerful movie. That's one with Hayden Christensen? No. No. That's Life is a House. This right. is the one with Timothy Hutton. Okay. Sorry. So we'll go to your movies <laughs> and then I'll do the slasher books. So, my favorite fall movies, of course, the classic, is Practical Magic. And I'm sure everybody's seen it. If you haven't, you need to. It's heartwarming. It's witchy, witchy, but it's and it's even a romance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my next favorite. I would have to say this is my my favorite. Top top of the list. Watcher in the Woods. Betty Davis is amazing, and it's creepy takes place during the fall but it's creepy and it's another Disney believe it or not <laughs> but it's not scary no it's just a mystery yeah it's and intriguing it's intriguing and it's awesome and <clears throat> not scary or whatever but mystic pizza another classic for the fall it's romance and there's no mystery whatsoever you it's know comedy. exactly what's going it's Vincent on Vincent D'Onofrio <laughs> and sadly it does have Julia Roberts but we can look past that and enjoy the rest of the people in the movie her hair is great yeah <laughs> and yeah go ahead go next all right <laughs> so for some horror movies these are just a few that are more fall I love horror movies so I have a fair amount of them the Covenant. It is not an amazingly written movie, but it is really entertaining. And everyone in it does a really good job. If you're a Sebastian Stan fan, he's in it. Uh, speaking of more known actors that, and less known movies, Murder by Numbers, Sandra Bullock and Ryan Gosling. It's fall, it's murder. It's not a horror, but it is. Could be. <laughs> it is a thriller. <laughs> Yeah, there is a, quite a question of who done it, but just why done it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Alright. <laughs> House of Haunted. <laughs> we have a little creeper of our own. Uh, House of Haunted Hill. I do like the original one. Vincent Price is always classic, but I like the newer one. It's good. It's a little funnier. Yes. There's there's nothing wrong with a funny horror movie. The Haunting awesome. is great. The original is good. It is one of the few horror movies I like the remake better. Why can't I remember her name? Well, Liam Neeson, Captain Zeta Jones, Lily Tyler. That's... I always want to call her Liv Tyler. Lily Tyler. It's phenomenally done. It's very creepy. It's very. Don't have weird things carved into your bed. <laughs> Turbs creep me out. <laughs> <laughs> Messengers 2. Messengers 1 is good. Messengers 2, the Scarecrow, Norman Reedus. It's more fall. It's got a Scarecrow in it. You can't get more late summer fall than that. <laughs> it's good. It's creepy. It's not too gory. Same with the woods. Bruce Campbell. It's the all-girls school one. <laughs> I love Bruce Campbell. <laughs> Where the woods attack them. It's great. It's definitely got a what the hell is going on, and then when you realize it, you're like, oh shit, that's cool. <laughs> and Masters of Horror. These are the best. <laughs> These are the best. They're not long. It's technically a TV show. There's a few that are a little over an hour. I don't know if Shudder has them or not, but if you can pick up the series, it's great. It's, there's lots of different actors in it. It's there's John Carpenter, there's yeah, John Landis, Stuart Gordon, all these different horror directors that are amazing. It's just, it's a great watch. Is that the one with the incident on oh, and off? It deserves its own. It's the only one I've, I've watched. <laughs> it deserves its own. I have it on the collection and by itself because it's a great movie. It is not a the damsel in distress girl in this is a fighter she is awesome it's creepy it's a little gooey but it's good but if you like strong female characters <laughs> exactly this is your film she's not just like oh save me i'm gonna kick your ass she's great <laughs> she's gonna save herself <laughs> so um next up on my list is recipe books and i am going to say hands down the number one coziest fall recipe book is the Company's Coming Casseroles book. And there is far much more in here than casseroles. There is a recipe in here for chuck wagon chili that it's the only chili we make. We will do a <laughs> video on it at some point. Yeah, and it is amazing. Um, Carmen's Caper, but there's lots of really super cozy recipes. They're not your Instagram recipes, their actual sit down, cook a dinner, and enjoy it with your family. But there's a lot of really good, yeah, a lot of really good fall recipes in here. Um, <clears throat> next up, sorry, I'm out of order. You're all out of order. You're all out of order. No. Um, once again, classics. They're the Better Homes and Gardens favorites, all-time favorites. And the hamburger and the beef are amazing. They have a lot of really good, once again, super cozy. Super, fall. your grandmother would have made them, but exactly. are still fantastic yeah. today. And believe it or not, meat, meatball minestrone, the mini meatball minestrone in the hamburger book, mm. I think it is. Um, is amazing and that's what got me through chemo <laughs> because it was really good and they're all actually really simple to turn gluten-free which is great yes they they take the gluten-free flour or pasta or bread crumbs really well so no matter what your if your dietary is that then mm -hmm. it's still a good book to have yes totally I have a couple baking books um, the homemade cookie books in the same series is really good. There's lots of um, Very classic. real classic fall Christmas type movies, so we're getting to that other season, mm -hmm. but they all work really well for fall. Lots of spicy recipes. And, and they're recipes that you're not going to find on Pinterest. Yeah. 
They're, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice to go old school because you find recipes that not everyone is making, but that you know someone brought to your house when you were a kid and you're like, dude, that was the best. Do you remember that one? Yeah. yeah. And this is another one, the Pillsbury Complete Book of Baking, and it's another old one. And you can't as tell you can tell, mark things in it or not. I yeah use it regularly, and I stuff things in for the pages instead of bookmarking them or dog earing them because <laughs> there's a lot of really really good recipes that we have AJ and I have made um, gluten free and before we were gluten free so they're very versatile and uh, yeah there's lots of good recipes in there you can go ahead and get your books right. next so I have you have a couple really quick reads, and yes, they're juvenile books, but they're good books. If, you're, if you've been in a slump where you haven't read and you're like, well, it's fall, I really want to read something, my suggestion is go and pick up a couple little, like, teenage books because they're quick reads. R.L. Stein, The First Evil, The Cheerleader Horror Series. This is, I reread this constantly. I have all of them, but these ones, the first three take place during fall like different years they're, they're just so good they're not a deep book they're just a light kind of creepy book that it's just really fun to read and sometimes you don't need to be invested know, yeah. in it <laughs> yeah. but if you want to invest some time John Saul is always really good I haven't read this a few times or anything and I got it used <laughs> uh, The Unwanted is a good it's takes place in a swamp beginning of just before school starts so it is fall there are a lot of books that he writes that are just so good he's creepy in a different way than Stephen King I like Stephen King books don't get me wrong but John Saul writes more unsettling books that are gonna sit with you a little longer yeah <laughs> and that's gore yeah but they really they make you think mm -hmm. some of them yeah they're fun and creepy if you want a romance book though Bewitched. It is an anthology series. I don't even know when we when this was published because we've it's had it here. since I was in high school uh, <laughs> or elementary school. Ninety seven right. was when it was published. There's other ones, but if you can get this one, um, I don't think any of the writers have really read anything else by. But no. it's just a good read. I like a good anthology book because you're not sitting there reading a full book, especially in the fall if you're running around doing stuff, but you can read just a short little story and move on. They're great, they're romantic, they're cute. If you have children and you're taking them places, these are the kind of books that are awesome to take with you because you can read little bits, you know, yeah. you're not invested, you're not like, I'm like, sorry, sing, wait, you, <laughs> you, you can wait half an hour until I finish this chapter. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, quick and easy. However, if you have kids, or for yourself, because you don't need to have kids to enjoy a good old ghost story. Right. I love this book. Had this book since I was a kid. <laughs> it's very fun. It's got lots of pictures in it. It's very well illustrated. This is just classic collection illustrated by Walt Starrick. Starrick? Struck. Struck. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good though. Lots of good ghost stories. You can't go wrong with a good ghost story. There's a whole series don't know how easily you could find them anymore but they're stories to tell when you're camping or stories to tell at sleepovers I should have grabbed one of those and they're really short fun horror stories that are good for kids or for yourself mm -hmm. that's completely okay so I don't have any books because nobody writes fall sci-fi books mm. <laughs> I te typically read a lot of sci-fi but I do have some other suggestions for recipe books because now is the perfect time when vegetables and fruits are abundant out there. Start preserving. But I'm not talking, you know, Just vinegar canning. and canning. I'm talking fermenting. Um, Donna Schwenk, she's on YouTube, has amazing videos. Um, she has three different books, The Cultured Food for Health, uh, Cultured Food for Life, and Cultured Food in a Jar. I have the Cultured Food in a Jar on my Kindle, but these ones I have 
in paperback and as you can see I use them as well and she goes from everything from kefir to cultured vegetables to that's why we started doing kefir and kombucha was because of reading her books and watching her videos she has a podcast on youtube that is awesome um i'll leave you that have below. a health yeah you have a health issue and she can tell you what to do for it but now's the perfect time when especially like cabbage and beets and stuff like that that's then pickles that are out there and you if you haven't grown your own you probably can pick them up at a farmer's market that are healthy and without chemicals and and uh, just some really good really good uh, recipes and information as well um, next up is a drink to your health this book has seasonal um, recipes and it's all full of different things for if you're feeling crummy open it up and it'll tell you what to eat or drink soups it's a lot more like soups and teas and smoothies and stuff but uh, it's an awesome book for health as are the Sally Fallon Morale I say it right? <laughs> Sally Fallon. Um, the Nourishing Books. The Nourishing Traditions, which has a lot of cultured foods in it, um, a lot of soups, stews, that kind of thing, and the Nourishing Broth, where she teaches you how to make bone broths from chicken, from every kind of animal you can think of, um, vegetables, everything. And both of them, especially this time of year when it's getting colder and you want soups and stews and you want to feel good but it'll actually even help you feel better because it's got more nutrition and these are both just really good books and these you can find everywhere um, I've had mine for a long time but you can get them chapters yeah Amazon secondhand bookstores yeah. you name it Good and stuff. last but not least is the one movie that I feel everyone should watch at every season, but this season particularly, it's called, the one I have is called Ambition to Meaning by Wayne Dyer. However, um, it's Those published the, as The, the Shift. shift. Yeah. yeah. So if you're looking for it, it's called The Shift. And then KJ could probably link that yeah. below. You can probably get it on Amazon and even get it on Hay House. Um, I'm not sure if it's on YouTube, mm -hmm. but because <clears throat> he does have a lot of stuff on there, so yeah. And it's actually a movie, and it's actually a really meaningful, meaningful movie. Um, and then now you might learn something. And uh, I love watching it every season, but especially in the fall when. I'm reminded to slow down and enjoy life. A couple other ones we don't have an actual hard copy of. On Disney Plus, you should be able to find Boogity and Bride of Boogity. They are the they are from classic Walt Disney movies from the 80s. They are very good. They are yeah. not scary. Yeah. The first one has Christy Swanson in it, and the second one they changed the kids because it's what you did in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> These kids are busy, we'll just trade them all in. It's they really good it. though. <laughs> just swap those kids out for the next movie. No one will notice. <laughs> it's funny. It's not something that would be a problem to watch with anybody of any age. Um, another one that is good and creepy and great for any time from Halloween till after Christmas because that's how long it spans over The Lady in White. I don't have it on DVD. I have seen it to watch on YouTube. <clears throat> it is a really good movie. It is creepy. It is, and someone is narrating it. He's telling the story of when he was growing up in the 1960s in a small town, and Halloween night he sees the ghost of a girl getting murdered, and it just follows him, and he discovers what happened. It's really good. It's got sweet moments, funny moments, and a couple sad moments. But, it <laughs> but is, it's yeah. good. It's creepy. If you but don't not find terrifying. it, it's worth watching. Yeah. yeah. Everyone always talks about series to watch. A lot of people bring up Gilmore Girls, which is a great show. I will suggest The X-Files. 
it's filmed in Vancouver, so it always kind of looks like fall, because <laughs> it's always raining, and it's creepy, but good, it is a long investment, but it's amazing, it is my childhood, it is, another thing definitely, uh, for the fall, don't forget your coffee, never forget coffee, <laughs> never forget coffee, <laughs> everyone goes for pumpkin spice, which is really good, another super simple one, is a snickerdoodle latte, which is what this is. All you do is put brown sugar in and then sprinkle cinnamon sugar on top and it tastes like a snickerdoodle. Awesome. You don't have to make anything, you don't have to pre-boil. If you just want something really cozy in the moment, there you go. If cinnamon is not your jam, and I know there are a lot of people mm. out there who don't like cinnamon, we also do nutmeg. Mm. So I lit we literally just put fresh ground mm -hmm. nutmeg into sugar and mix it up in a bottle just like you do cinnamon sugar mm -hmm. and we sprinkle do it up. nutmeg sugar and sprinkle it on and there you go for those of you who detest cinnamon because I know you're out there <laughs> <laughs> and also keep your eye open for Halloween and fall jelly beans <laughs> they're, they're awesome. out there and they're amazing <laughs> and they're fun and it's just something simple you can throw in a a glass jar when somebody's coming over and if you're not a baker but you want to have something really fall out that isn't just regular candy it's a great option and uh, I think that's it other than keeping your pumpkins and your plaid close that's right <laughs> till then uh, till next time have a good time and uh, remember to enjoy watching